Hey everyone, in today's video I will dive deeper into integrating Grapes.js into your React app. I will cover how to initiate the Grapes.js editor with custom blocks, save the Grapes.js content, render it back with React components and create dynamic blocks for the Grapes.js editor. Let's start with the basics. First, make sure you have installed the Grapes.js library. You can do this by running the command npm install Grapes.js in your terminal. Let's clean up our React project by removing the default content and adding SAS to our dependencies, making it much easier to write styles for our app. In the main app.js file, import all necessary dependencies the Grapes.js library and the Grapes.js CSS stylesheet. Now let's define two constants using React hooks. Editor with useState and Editor ref with useRef. useState helps us keep track of the editor state, while useRef is used to reference the editor instance directly. Make sure to import both useRef and useState from React. Next, I will initialize our Grapes.js editor with useEffect. This hook lets us perform side effects in function components, such as initializing the Grapes.js editor when the component mounts. Inside the use effect, I will check if editor ref current is null to avoid reinitializing the editor. Then we create an instance of the Grapes.js editor. This instance is essential for managing the editor and accessing its methods. In our HTML, we can create a simple container for our editor by adding a div container with an editor class for styling purposes, and another div with an ID of gjs where the editor will be rendered. And don't forget to import the use effect from React. In the use effect, we also define the container property for our editor. This tells Grape.js where to render the editor in the DOM. As you can see, with this simple setup in use effect, we have initialized the default Grapes.js editor with all settings. Let's set up some initial options for the editor instance. For example, setting from element to false ensures we start with a clean editor. We can also define default CSS properties like height and width for the editor container. Setting storage manager to false disables the default storage manager, allowing us to handle content storage ourselves. Now let's define custom blocks for our editor using the block manager. We can specify a container where our blocks will be appended. Similar to the editor container, we'll create another div container with the id blocks in our HTML. For styling, we can position our blocks in a flex container on the left side with the main editor on the right side. This setup makes it easy to customize both the functionality and visual experience of the editor. To clean up the panel in the editor, we can use the panel's property to define custom buttons and options. Leaving the buttons array empty removes all the buttons from the panels, giving us a clean slate to work with. Grapes.js uses Shadow DOM, which means regular CSS won't affect anything inside the editor. To style components within the editor, we can either use inline styling for each component or append our custom CSS style sheet to the Grapes.js Shadow DOM. This is done using the canvas property. Now let's define our custom blocks. We can use the block manager add method to add blocks. For instance, we can add a box block with a specific content and wrap it under components category. And I almost forgot, don't forget to set the editor ref current to the editor instance and update the editor state at the end of the use effect. To ensure our blocks are visible and styled correctly, we can define basic styles for our box block in a CSS file, which should be placed inside the public folder of your React app. This is important because Grapes.js will look for this file to style the blocks inside the editor. Now let's try placing the text block inside the box block. As you can see, it works smoothly as designed. However, you might notice that on refresh, we lose all the content. To fix this, we will add a save button that will save our Grapes.js content to local storage. This keeps our example simple, but 
but demonstrates how you can use local storage or a Node.js application with a Mongo database to save content. I will show you some examples at the end. Let's add a save function to store the grapes.js content in local storage. We'll define a handle save function that checks if the editor instance exists, retrieves the components and saves them as JSON in local storage. Add a button with an onClick function to trigger the save function. Then you can verify the save content in the browser's local storage under the key My Page. To load the save content back into the editor, we parse the JSON from local storage and set the components in the editor instance. This way, the content persists even after a page refresh. Finally, let's render our blocks with React components. Create a new file, template.js, where we define basic components like box and text, and a template component to iterate over the JSON content and render it with our React components. In the template component, use a use effect to load JSON content from local storage into a state variable. Now, we need a function to iterate over this content and render it based on the type of each component. I will create a function called renderComponent. This function takes a component object and checks its type. For example, if the type is box, we use our box component to render it. Inside the box, we'll also check if there are any child components to render recursively. This allows us to handle nested components dynamically. To ensure that the components are rendered correctly, double check the type of each component in your JSON content. In this case, I noticed that the text wasn't rendering properly because I use uppercase T instead of a lowercase. Let's correct that. And now it works. Easy, right? Let's add some more blocks and text elements to test our React app. Works pretty well. I hope you enjoyed this introduction to Grapes.js and React components. Now let me show you how I integrated Grapes.js into my own custom React projects. In my dashboard, users can define projects and project files, each with unique ID. I can create individual nodes by matching IDs with projects. I've customized the Grapes.js editor to provide a unique product experience, including defining custom styles and block traits. Under the hood, I have my Node.js component, where I initiate the editor in the same way. To save content, I use a Node.js server on render to save and retrieve content from Mongo database. I use custom endpoints such as API Node's update node for editing an existing node or API node create node if the node doesn't yet exist in the database. I also use dynamic component blocks for my Grapeshares integration, which means I don't have to manually define each block. Some blocks are created dynamically. This allows me to import blocks from other projects or cards easily. For example, if a project has additional information like fetched SVG content or an icon library, I can import these as dynamic blocks into Grapeshares content and render them with unique components. In this setup, I have added a copy to clipboard function so users can copy the exact SVG content of each icon. This approach enables me to manage nodes dynamically, import blocks from other projects, and add custom features like copying SVG content to the clipboard. I hope you like the detailed introduction to the Grapes.js and React. I have been working with Grapes.js since 2020 starting with integrating it into Go CMS and exploring new possibilities ever since. If you have any questions or want to know more, just drop a message in the comment section below. Stay tuned for more updates and don't forget to subscribe and like my video. Thanks for watching.